Welcome. Now in this module, we're going to take a, take a look at risk management and some detail about the framework of the risk management as specified by ISO 31000-2018. And the URL that you can see on the screen provides a very good description of the ISO 31000-2018 risk management overall detail. Now this is figure number three from ISO 31000-2018. And there are risk management framework components. There's a risk management principles section. And then there is a risk management process section. So let's take a look at the framework five components, which are integration, design, implementation, evaluation, and improvement. So the principles of risk management and the framework are closely related. We took a look at the eight principles in one of the previous modules. For example, one of the principles is that the risk management should be integrated. And one of the components of the framework is integration. The principle outlines what must be achieved and the framework provides information on how to achieve the required integration. ISO 31000 guidelines are centered on leadership and commitment, which must be provided to implement a successful risk management framework. The effectiveness of risk management will depend on its integration into all aspects of the organization, including decision making. The remaining components of the framework are design, implementation, evaluation, and improvement. This approach is often represented in management literature as plan, do, check, act, which is the typical cycle, plan, do, check, act. ISO 31000 provides narrative description. If you look at the, the standard document, it provides narrative description of how the framework should support risk management activities in an organization. This is often referred to as the risk architecture, strategy and protocols of the organization as set out in table two, which we'll take a look at. So this is the risk management framework and we have architecture, strategy and protocols. Now we talk about risk management architecture, we talk about the risk management strategy, and risk management protocols, and there are a number of points in each of these sections. In risk management architecture, we have a committee structure in terms of reference, roles and responsibilities, internal reporting requirements, external reporting controls, risk management assurance engagements. And if you cannot see this diagram, then you can refer to the URL which was shown to you on the first uh, slide of this module. Risk management strategy has risk management philosophy, Arrangements for embedding risk management, risk appetite and attitude to risk, benchmark tests for significance, specific risk statements and policies, risk assessment techniques, risk priorities for the present year, and risk management protocols have tools and techniques, risk classification, risk assessment, risk control rules and procedures, responding to incidents, issues and events, documentation and record keeping, training and communications, audit procedures and protocols, and reporting disclosures and certification. Now, as you can see, risk is an entire strategy. It has an entire architecture. It has principles and frameworks, and there's also a process to follow. Now, what happens is that uh, the, you see the entire information security objectives are based on reducing risk for the organization to make the organization secure from a confidentiality, integrity, and availability perspective. However, what happens is that technical personnel cannot usually relate and understand this entire deep, uh, very detailed mechanism of risk. And the concepts of risk seem very uh, uh, non-tangible to them because these are all, uh, for example, conceptual based and doesn't relate to a server or a workstation or a network device or an application which you can operate on. So these are conceptual framework related um, uh, models or mechanisms of how to control risk. And the challenge becomes that in an organization in which the information security posture is very poor, and in, in uh, most of the countries in this region, we have very poor security posture, the risk concepts become very irrelevant. So the, uh, the um, security transformation model uh, talks about governance at the last layer, which is, which is at the layer number four, whereas emphasis should be given first on security hardening, then on vulnerability management, then on security engineering, which all relate to controls 
on the on the IT assets and then security governance. When you have maturity in the organization for information security and the posture has actually improved and you have done all the baseline activities as for international best practices, that is the time to spend efforts on risk management. However, if you're going to spend your time on risk management and on governance activities, whereas the actual structure and foundation um, of the information security and IT security is totally absent, then uh, if there's a risk everywhere. So what are you going to manage and how are you going to do it? That's the issue. So that's why um, our organization and in this course, we've emphasized that the maturity should be taken into account and we must be very practical related to how we are going to implement the information security program. And the best way to do it is through the information security transformation model, security hardening layer number one, layer number two, vulnerability management, layer number three, security engineering, layer number four, governance. And that's when you reach that level, which will take a lot of effort and probably a year or two years, that's the time to start assessing the risks with the help of the guidelines given in this module and in this section. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.